it's Ethany, as you well know, because you clicked on the link and we are very, very lucky to have such an amazing guest with us today. And we're going to be touching on some really profound, deep, probably triggering subject and topic for a lot of us who are going through um, our journey as being humans. I am going to be introducing now, hopefully I don't butcher your name, <laughs> Michelle Guerrero Dennison who is who's basically, <laughs> yay, who's basically got the most amazing, um, you know, I found her on Instagram, basically. I stalked her on Instagram. And she's Glitter in the Dirt Witch. And I was just instantly attracted and in love with this uh, authentic being. Um, I'm actually going to hand it over to Michelle about her journey and how this all came along and to introduce us to the topic because I feel like it's more powerful coming from the source itself. So Michelle, thank you so much for joining us and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be on social media, Glitter in the Dirt Witch. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, hello. I like being referred to as the source, by the way. I think I'm <laughs> going to like add that in to some stuff. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, I think what I first got onto social media um, back in the MySpace days, but I started becoming like a thing um, probably five or six years ago. And it actually started out, I went by the name Zaftig Times and it was a plus size style blog. Um, I had been um, depressed and I had had, I'd just been like dealing with some stuff and it was actually my husband's idea. And he was like, Hey, why don't you try writing a blog? And I was like, that's dumb. But I was just looking for some some way to um, to heal, and I I had a I always like style, and turns out I'm a horrible um, fashion blogger. I'm the worst. So, um, but in that journey, being part of uh, the plus size community, uh, which I didn't know really was a thing, like um, I stumbled on to the uh, concept of self love. And, um, which can really be a rabbit hole. Um, it can go in like so many different directions. And, um, at that point, my experience with it was very topical. It was very surface. It was indulgences and it was like treating myself because that's what I thought it was at the time. And it really, that's a small fraction of what it is, but that's like the stuff you do when the work is done. So, but I didn't know that. And then um, I had an absolute spiritual awakening. Um, and um, I, I became glitter in the dirt. And that was like, I was trying to marry this. Um, Cause I'm too, I'm, we're all, you know, multi level but I'm very much like a, a constant dichotomy. Like I'm always two things at once. And so um, while I was having the spiritual moment, I knew that there were other parts to me, if that makes sense. And I didn't want, like, so I just didn't want to, like, throw out the baby with the bathwater. Like, I was, I knew that something was coming. Anyway, I dropped a lot of the self-love stuff, and I became, um, I just devoted myself to my craft. And um, interestingly, though, I have found over time that these two things, self-love um, and, and my craft, are intertwined. Like the more, the better I am at one or the more I understand one, the other kind of comes along. And that's how I got here, if that makes sense. Totally makes sense. And that's a, um, a, a it's a journey, right? That's the thing that I, I work with a lot of people from all around the world and they say, I want to know what my thing is. I want to know my purpose. And I do per life purpose readings, but I said, the, your purpose is to discover your purpose. Not everyone, like some people, they are out of the womb and they know exactly what they want to do. They absolutely know from the get-go and others are eternal seekers or eternal learners. And some people need to try and evolve, but it's the journey. And then when we find, cause it's about finding ourselves too, by the way, I would be the worst fashion blogger. I love fashion, but I literally am the worst. Most days I'm in track pants. So <laughs> yeah, well, that was my thing. I'm in like yoga pants and, um, dirty t-shirts most of the time. So it was really hard to be a fashion blogger. Yeah. I, I'm there with you. I'm hundred percent there with you. So how do you feel about this? Self-care has really, hashtag self-care has become a huge and now a massively commercial thing. For real. Uh, yeah, for real. Right. So how do you feel about this now becoming quite the limelight um, and hot topic? Um, well, hmm. 
there are times when it reminds me of like the eighties and like the, because you're worth it ads, like when you talk about the commercialization and I think that there are a lot of things right now that I'm into that have become very um, commercial and very um, monetized. And so it's, it can be challenging. And I, but I, like, I, I think that the biggest thing about self care is the things that we do in the quiet. So yeah, for sure. Like if you want to get yourself like a face mask tonight, so you can go home and chill with your glass of wine and that's what makes you feel better. Super. But we can't forget that you can't pay for some of this work. Like there's a lot of it. You can absolutely, you can participate. Um, you can do therapy. You can, you know, go to retreats. You can do all of that, but really the important work happens inside of you. And that's the part that I think a lot of us don't want to do. So yeah. it's, all, it's that topical surface self-care. Like, and I think that there's like a, um, like a trinity of self self-care and self-acceptance and self-love and those you have to have all three to make it work and how beautiful is that because the triangle is the strongest shape in nature it is folks look that up google that it's a fact and how beautiful that is so important those three aspects and at some time we really struggle or one of the points is not getting any love whatsoever but we also have this massive pressure. So that's my next question. How do you feel, do we, the pressure to post selfies with the, the mask on and, and, and the, the cup, the glass of wine, or like the, the pressure to all of a sudden, like if you don't love yourself, then you're not worthy of love. Like, how, how, can we talk a little bit about that and how that's affected you or how you view that? Yes. Um, <laughs> Well, for me, I have always been a chronic oversharer. Like even before social media was a thing, like I talk a lot. I want to share my experience with everybody. I want to, like, I, um, it's just what I do. And in every iteration of me, I've, I've been 72 women already in my life. I'm sure I'll be 72 more women and every one of them talk too much. And <laughs> care too much. But to that end, it has to come from a place of authenticity. And I think authenticity is another one of those buzzwords that we have right now. Yes. Everybody. And like, I do my best to be transparent. I think that's the responsibility to the, on the end. Nobody has to do it. There's no formula. Like there's nobody says that you have to be authentic. But for me, you know, I have bipolar disorder. I struggle with anxiety and depression. I, um, you know, so I'm a, a grossly imperfect person trying to be the best version of myself that I'm capable of. So yeah, for sure. There are times like this, um, I was in the hospital last week. And, um, when I, and I shared that and there was a part of me that was very much, um, wondering if I was crying out for attention and yeah, girl, I was because I was scared. And you know what? Social media, the people that have followed me and, and the friends that I have made, like they came through for me and it was beautiful. Um, and then over the weekend, so I keep thinking we made them um, on Saturday, we made homemade pizzas and I found a new beer and I totally had like the, I had my beer, I had my pizza. But like, it was this, this moment of celebration for me where I was like, okay, like things were really shitty five days ago and I shared that, but you know what? Like today's a new day and I'm, I'm doing the best I can. I think that's the thing. It's, um, I share it all. I share too much, but I think it has to be a rounded picture. Does that, I don't know if that answers the question correctly. That, no, it totally does. I, I see, and I have this other thing. I, I'm an oversharer too, if we're. Um, especially when I'm face to face with people and I'm connecting uh, with people and I have shared on social media, but I, I, I stop myself. That's my thing. Like I, I get to a place where like I go, okay, maybe, maybe this doesn't need to be on, on the social medias, but then it's like, people have always told me that, that, you know, you, you should share, like be authentically you and I am getting better at it. But I think because I worked in such a corporate environment for such a long time, I'm conditioned to like, you don't take your shit to work. And it's like, well, now I like my work is me. My mm -hmm. work just comes from me. So, but I think that, that what you're really demonstrating with that is we are, like you said, per imperfect people. Everybody is. And what a lot of people are attracted to are those accounts where it's like it's all yachts and you know it's all this beautiful glamour right aspirational barbie doll stuff 
Um, and then it's like, oh, I chipped a nail. And it's like, what? Like, you know, that's not real suffering. I mean, it hurts, but um, right. whereas when you say you've actually shown the journey, it's like, I'm celebrating the fact that I had a difficult time and coming out of it. And some of the, some of the most inspiring things can be, and when I get responses, when I, I took a break in, um, January, I took a month off and said, to, well, I, I'm still sort of on a break at the moment and it's now May. Um, cause I said, I've just gone through a really difficult time. Personally, I need to do, you know, practice what I preach and take a month off and do some self care. And you know, the response was, was amazing. Everyone was like, you know, I didn't go kind of into it, but I said, I need to step back for a bit. Um, and yeah, you need to, people need to see themselves in you as well as a collective and you can't do that being shiny and perfect all the time. I'm never shiny and perfect. And that's a real thing. Like I'm, I'm so grossly imperfect and I, I'm cool with it. Like that's, that's who I am. And to try and be anything else would just be fake. Right. Totally. And that's the other thing. What I do like about the fact that authenticity and self care and self love and a lot of the underground kind of things are like witchcraft and tarot and all the things that I'm very much into are um, becoming more mainstream is that it's forcing us to look at the authenticity of the people that we've been working with or maybe uh, friends, family, even to the media that we consume. It's really holding a mirror up and making us kind of go, huh, you know, how do I actually feel in my body about this situation in this person? And anything that sparks reflection for, for me, I feel is a good thing. I concur wholeheartedly. So how, well, this is a big, big question. How do you feel about the body positivity movement? It is a very big question. Um, I have mixed feelings. I think, um, gosh, that, that's a lot to unpack. But yeah, I think, I know, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Um, I think it can be a wonderful haven for people who desperately need it. I think um, it's definitely been co-opted. Um, it has been monetized. Um, in fact, a couple of years ago when I was backing off from the blog and kind of um, I started focusing on, on my spirituality and my craft and then uh, later came um, my wellness and that those are that, and that work can be really problematic, but uh, as I was doing that and I lost weight do, because I just, I started doing yoga and I changed and what I was eating cause I didn't feel well. Like I, I, my craft led me to wanting to be more connected with nature, which led me to want to be more connected with my food. Like it's just this. Yeah. This total. Food. Yeah. And so as that was happening, um, I, I had some people who were very disappointed in me who had been following me from my plus size blog. Um, I lost a lot of followers. Um, a lot of people felt betrayed by me and, um, like I'm still a big girl. <laughs> like I was, I don't, I, I, I still get, um, sometimes, um, like with my yoga posts, I'll use the hashtag, um, fat yoga or plus size yoga. And I get frequently people telling me like, I'm not allowed to do that. So, um, right. And so, yeah, that in that aspect, I think it's become, but I think it's because it got so co-opted, like it was this safe haven for bigger bodies. And then it got kind of, everybody kind of crept in. And so now there's kind of this like policing that I feel like goes on sometimes. I don't get it a lot, but um, it is, and I want to be like, but I'm in the club. Like I'm, I've been a long standing member. <laughs> don't be mean to me. Um, I think, so, Body positivity is something that probably everybody does need, but there is a certain portion of our population that desperately needs this safe haven and this positive space to learn how to accept themselves and or maybe they already did and they just need a space that feels safe to express it. Like I think it's a critical thing. I think um, you know, as somebody who grew up being told that I was too fat, I wasn't pretty, I would be pretty if I would be Oh, I um, hate that. Yeah. Or line. you've got a pretty face, which I got for most of my life. Like the movement has really and truly helped me. And I, I would be lying if I said that it hadn't. Yeah. I think it's gotten a little problematic at points as anything that gets big will be, but I still think it's um, really important. And I think that it can be such a valuable resource and space. And I think that it's really important that it, it that it's allowed to exist. Well, first of all, I'm really sorry that 
that that that you have almost like kicked out anything to me that feels like really like you need a it's like a club like you need the secret handshake or whatever um i i feel i feel very mixed feelings i know that there needs to be a space i run groups i I have facebook groups i run a coven like i understand you need safe space and you need sacred space and a a container and a platform and and a shared experience i totally get it but the second that you start acting like the people that you feel have kicked you out from the space, it's like, mm, now we're kind of going into, we've swung the pendulum a little bit too far. Yeah. I think it's, like, I think it's a bit of a correction, right? Like right. I think, um, and I get it because I have seen women using like body positivity hashtags or like those, you know, um, body love, honor my curves, F your beauty standards. And when it's people who are traditionally considered beautiful, I have to admit that there are times that I've been like, you don't get to do that. Yeah. I get it. But I have felt it. And I don't, I don't know that any of us is here to police anybody else's journey in this aspect. That's just, um, so it has been um, a huge gift to me. And then at times it has um, bitten me in the ass. Totally. And that's, that's with anything that we're, where we're trying to, um, I feel like widen the spectrum of what is considered to be commercially beautiful. Mm-hmm. We're going to have so much in that because it's almost like we're going into to territory the, that we don't fully understand. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm all for, I'm all for calling out Victoria's Secret for refusing to have plus size models on the runway and for being transphobic. I'm fucking all for that. They deserve to be called out at nonsense, you know? Um, And I'm all for like women like um, Ashley Graham being, and and the Sports Illustrated, actually this is is quite fortuitous, the Sports Illustrated um, swimsuit uh, edition just came out. I'm not sure if you've seen it. Mm -hmm. It is everything. I mean, I know they're probably pandering a little bit and I know it's just a start, they have women in burkas. They have women of plus size. It is, they have women with disabilities. It's like, it's everything. It's like what it should have oh, been. Sure. Yeah. So, and this is Sports Illustrated, right. right? So it's, we're slowly getting there. But like, as you said, the, we just need to kind of course correct every now and then yeah. to just to t- touch in and make sure that we're kind of still going. But what you said about being policed is yes. Amen. Like, um, absolutely. Because this is also about everyone's journey on there. Right. So if you're policing somebody's journey, if you're policing somebody's experience, that is obviously got something to do with what's going on with the person who needs to call them out yeah. or the police officer in that situation. Um, but it's complex because we're dealing with a lot of really shitty, patriarchal, sure. nasty, commercial crap. Like every woman grows up being told her body should look different than it does or being coveted because her body looks like we just grow up in, in this shit. All of us, all of us have shit around this issue. And I think that's, what's hard for everybody to understand. Even like, even myself, like I have moments of snap judgment and I have to check myself and to your point and be like, I don't know her life. I don't know what brought her here. So just take a minute. Did you, um, what was that? Amy Schumer movie where she I feel pretty I actually really liked that movie I did too I know we weren't supposed to right like they were like ah but it was a like funny is still funny and I think that again we've gotten really hypersensitive and maybe we needed to right but like it was a funny clever movie and that movie has been made in so many variations over time like it's cool like it was a fun movie and like if you even look at that from like another iteration that was very um mass shallow hell so i'm going to put that next to <clears throat> yeah. so for those of you who haven't seen shallow hell if you're a millennial watching this um it was a terrible movie made with jack black and gwyneth paltrow and it was extraordinarily misogynistic but it happened and um and i'm that's not really my comedy style um but it was popular because jack black was having his moment and uh and i like jack like jumanji i like i thought he was everything in jumanji um so i do like jack black a lot it was just i didn't like that film for it was very problematic especially if you watch it now back then maybe not so much but then you watch then this one at least with amy schumer first of all it was from the woman's perspective and there was also the fact that she was coming to to grips with her confidence in herself and not not caring and the way her friends were becoming ostracized. And even that moment with the supermodel, 
saying how she was being dumped and cheated on by her boyfriend. It's like, we all have the same problems. We all, no matter who you are, that fear and insecurity will take on the form that is going to get you no matter what it is, you know? So it's having that love, no matter, I feel like having that love and compassion for everybody, no matter what it is, because as you said, we don't know what's going on for that person. Mm -hmm. We have no idea. You know, that, that gorgeous girl working at, you know, American Outfitters might have bulimia. Right. You know, or she could be one of those girls who has a hyperthyroid, no matter how much she eats, she's going to be a, a stick errand her entire life. And yeah, someone like me who is curvy AF I may look at that and go, I, I'm jealous of that. But then I'm going to go, but why? She's probably jealous of the fact that I've got boobs and a butt. Right? Right. So it's like, we, yeah, it's, it's such a complex issue. And then we have the beauty industry making billions upon billions upon billions of our right? insecurities. And it's like, we're just feeding the beast at that point. And that's all they've ever done, like ever. And now they're like, oh, wait a second. You want to love yourself as you are? We have something to sell you for that too. Yeah, totally. I'm like, come on, you guys. But I'm still buying makeup, so what do I say? <laughs> I'm terrible. All I'm wearing at the moment is mascara because I can't be uh, bothered and I have sensitive skin. And I, basically, it's because I just can't be bothered. But um, I like look at anyone who puts on makeup and I'm like, you are a wizard. Like, how do you do that? Like, I can't. I just can't. I'm terrible at it. Dude, I was a makeup artist for a long time. But now, like, what, what girls are doing with makeup now blows me away. Like, all of them are better than I ever was at the top of my game. They're amazing. It's, it, it's incredible. I love watching drag queen makeup tutorials. Cause I, first of all, I love drag queens. Secondly, I'm like, I just can't even. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. So what are some of your favorite daily rituals for keeping your train on the, on the track of like honoring your temple and yourself and your journey? Well, um, yoga is probably one of the biggest ones. And, um, I, when I often say like, I'm not good at yoga, but what I mean by that is, is my yoga is not fancy because I'm not here to show you a fat girl doing a handstand. And there are so many girls who can do that and their arm strength must be amazing because I can't do it, but I'm, I don't do yoga for the picture. I, and I'm not saying that they do. I don't want to come off shitty to anybody else. My yoga practice is very, um, it's slow and it's really about, um, when I practice yoga, I have to get out of my head because if I don't get out of my head, I get hurt. And I learned that um, early and often. So a good part of, of self-care and self-love and, and all of that is chilling the fuck out sometimes. And so for me, yoga allows me to do that, but also to that idea of the temple, like if, if and I do believe like my body is my divine temple. I am divinity in and of myself. So I have to honor that. And for me, this is for other people, it might be dance. And for other people, it might like there's going to be other practices. For me, this is what it is. And, and so yoga is my first one and probably the biggest. And the other is um, I choose, uh, we as a family choose to eat as whole and as organic. And as, and it's, I feel like again, we talk, it becomes a privilege issue. And yes, yeah. I have the privilege and the ability to, I'm a stay at home mom, so I have time to cook. I can go to, you know, my local Whole Foods and buy the things that I want and feel good about what I'm putting in my family's body. I know not everybody has the opportunity to do that. And I'm really grateful for it. And I'm very aware of it. I feel like an asshole sometimes, but no, but that's the thing. Like even just having that awareness, cause I'm the same way. I'm a single mom, but I have the privilege of being able to eat organic. I know right. that there are a lot of people that unfortunately, and that's another system we don't have time to talk about, that unfortunately it's cheaper for them to go to McDonald's to, fe- to feed their entire family. 10 years ago, I was on food stamps and no. I was pseudo homeless and I could barely feed my children or myself. And like, so I've lived that life. I know that, I know that reality and which makes me even more grateful for what we have now. Um, and I, other than that, um, those were like my two big ones. I, I try and um, hug trees as often as possible, which, seems silly to a lot no, of people. I love it. Trees are amazing. Like, and there's, you know, there's scientific proof. I can't remember that it's a Japanese study that has proven that walking through a forest will literally like bring down your blood pressure. It increases serotonin levels. Like there is a magic and a medicine there. And so that's another big one. Like 
often I live across the street from a park and sometimes when I'm having a bad day I just trudge across the street and I just go hug a park or hug a tree for a few minutes because it helps like I feel like the trees are like I got you girl like give it to me let it go I'll put it down in the ground and go on with your day even just putting your hand, I often do hand because um, I'm a bit living in BC mm -hmm. um, around a lot of, I'm very close to a lot of forest. So I often go on my favorite trail and I always like put my hands in the water, mm -hmm. always put my hands in the water and put it over me. And then um, even just putting my hand on one of the trees and just having a moment to be like, Absolutely. thank you and transmutation and like, let's sink this in. And yeah, it's, it's haven, it's safe space. And plants in general, I guess that would be my third one, is um, my little tiny container garden and then getting to work with plant medicine. Like for, those are probably the big ones for me. So what do you do when you get triggered? So for example, say you're out and you have one of those people who are like, you would be so pretty if you just like lost like 15 pounds. <laughs> what do you do or what do you recommend that women and people, because hey, everyone gets it no matter if right. you uh, are on a gender you agree with the gender label or not right what are you what's your recommendation when you start getting triggered as f about oh, this stuff goodness gracious uh, it depends on the day right like sometimes if you're just like if i'm brimming with self-confidence and like i'm just feeling myself i'll be like bitch i'm already pretty and move on with my day <laughs> but on the other days um i think if I'm, if I'm able to be mindful enough, then I, I can take a minute and just be like, this isn't about me. This is clearly about some shit that they're carrying around and they had to let it go and cool. Like, and sometimes I can just let it slide off and that's, yay, like that's a good day. Um, but there are times, um, I find actually people very rarely say things like that to me anymore. Um, and I think it's because I just kind of give off this whatever like I think my energy field is like if you don't have anything nice to say then just go and say it yeah keep moving. um but I think in I think sometimes I, I have a big believer in crying and I know that it's crying is not weak it is they're, they're so strong it. yeah it is a great way to purge out negative emotions um or again sometimes um a walk in nature it, it seems it's not something that's readily available to everybody, but it helps me. Um, and if all else fails, a really good cup of Tulsi tea. See my, I have this mouth that tends to snap back at people. Oh. And depending on the day, I've become more and more like giving less fucks about things. And so depending on the day, I would do the same thing and say, why, well, you know, I feel I don't need that. Um, but you know, I would also be like, I feel like you would be pretty if you just shut your mouth. Like, <laughs> I felt like that girl. <laughs> you know what? I used to have a really vicious tongue and I, um, maybe about 10 years ago, I just made a decision. I didn't want to be that person anymore. And now when I need it, it's gone. Like I'll, I would think you were dumb face. Like, I can't do it anymore. I just cannot make those. The, and I want to sometimes, cause there are moments when absolutely somebody deserves to get it right back. Um, but I, I can't, I can't muster it up anymore. My favorite line, which is less vicious, because I, I do know that I have I have quite the vicious tongue sometimes, is to say just a smile and really, really like as big as you possibly can and say thank you so much for your unsolicited opinion and just. Oh, that's lovely. That's a good one. Because it's like you, you and and what is really funny is when people don't have no one has ever said that to them and they just kind of like did I just get an insult or did I just get a thank you? <laughs> they got no idea. Um, but yeah, I say that to people all the time with everything. It's like, if you struggle, just smile and say, thank you for your unsolicited opinion. Because as a mom, and you know this too, you are going to get opinions. And that's a really nice way to shut it down. Just, just shut the conversation down. Um, and then maybe go have a cry or whatever you need to after. I love that. I'm going to write that down when we're done because I, I want to say it all the time. So, so how do you feel what's been the impact that you've seen for yourself and the people that you've worked with when they fully begin to work on that triangle of self-love, self-acceptance and self-care? Like what's the transformation that you've seen in yourself? Um, gosh, well, I think when you find, I think it starts with self-acceptance. You might come at it from, I think the real transformation comes from that first. Because um, if you can't accept yourself where you're at today, you can't love yourself enough 
to get to the caring stage. So, and being really Can you honest, repeat that? Because that was really powerful. I don't know if I can. So, <laughs> so you have to start with, with self-acceptance because you have to love yourself. Like you've got to accept who you are today so that you can love yourself enough to get to the caring phase, right? Like, I think um, we all want to start with the self-care because it feels good, but it's just, um, it's like makeup versus skincare. And they're like, makeup is surface and it looks great from far away, but if you don't take care of your skin, if you don't, you know, wash and moisturize, then eventually over time, girl, everybody's going to know. So I think, um, Part of it for me, um, gosh, it's such a big question. I, yeah. I, I, I've watched a few people go through the process and I've had people comment on my process. Like one of my oldest friends, we were recently together and we have very little in common. We've been friends for almost 20 years. And she was like, you are a completely different person than when I first met you. And I was like, oh, and she's like, no, 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 no. Like, she's like, you are happy for, and that maybe is like the first thing. And that's what I get, I hear a lot from people is that there's, that they can see my joy. Um, and I have seen it in other people too. People, when you get there, when you get to real self-love and it's, we're still working on it, right? Like I still work on it every day. And you know, that whole healing isn't linear thing. It's the same, right? I still have great moments of self-doubt and I have all, like self-criticism and I, but I think you give less fucks as you get closer to really loving yourself. And that is such a huge, like there's so much more time. Like if, if all of a sudden, if I don't really care if you think I'm cool or you think I'm pretty or you think I'm smart, I have all this free time to be cool and pretty and smart. Like it's, it's beautiful. And, and again, like then the self care just becomes like maintenance kind of. Oh, I love that. That makes so much sense. And I, <clears throat> one of the things you said in there was about you become happy. And I think that's one of the things I've seen with people who have started to walk in their own power and their own love and their own kindness. It's like, wow, like the light, the light just gets turned right up, you know, yes. and then you have love for other people. And then that love just keeps going outward because you're whole within yourself. And again, you need the maintenance. You need to keep working. It doesn't stop, but at least you're at a place where it's like the foundation is so solid. Um, and and then when you slip, right, when you, when you have a bad day, when you have like, with, for me, I have bipolar disorder. And so um, when things are bad or when things are heavy and dark, it would have taken me months, maybe years to come back from that in the past. And now I can be like, okay, we had a rough week, two weeks, and now I'm going to dust myself off. And I have, I have the strength inside of me because I believe in myself enough to move through it. And then to learn through it as well, like it's, it's, it can be a lot. And I guess that's it. Well, that's, it's, and to also what I feel another beautiful thing in that is, is it's like, it's oh, giving yourself the grace when you do slip or when you do get oh, triggered yeah. or when you are viciously, you know, clap back at someone and then you're like, oh, that was just as nasty, you know, later, but whatever it, it may be, or whenever you, when you're not perfect, because that's when you're really showing yourself acceptance. Mm -hmm. and then the love. I think you're right. Yeah. So a couple more questions and then we'll, uh, we'll get to how we can work with you. How does trust and magic come into your practice? Like how do you view those two important aspects of working with yourself and self-acceptance and self-love? Well, I think much like we were talking about in the, in the body positivity movement with Witchcraft being a witch has become fashionable. Totally. And I have really struggled with that. I've had mixed, I've had moments of like, yay, and moments of like, come the fuck on. So um, I've landed in the middle now again, kind of with everything. Just do your things, guys. Like, it's fine. The hashtags, like witches of Instagram, have brought so many people together and it's beautiful. But with that has come this problematic thing now where we're policing each other and our spiritual practices, which is complete and utter bullshit to me. Like, so like, I'm a very, I'm a kitchen witch. I'm very eclectic and I'm very unstructured. So like, sometimes there's a full moon on Saturday. I may, or I may not go out and do something like, and that's okay because that's my authentic practice. I don't, I, 
this thing that we have where you have to do this and you have to do that. Yeah. I think it's really important that you know who you are and what feels authentic and right to you and that you move from a place of authenticity and your magic. And so that's where this marriage is in that I, there's, um, I'm going to quote myself and it's super, no, no, please do, please do. Please do. <laughs> but I'm going to say, it's just, I, I don't often say profound things but I did one time and I wrote it down and I love it. And it's that a witch who works with bar, no, damn it. I messed it up. Let's try it again. <laughs> um, it's um, a witch who doubts herself works with borrowed power at best. So if you don't believe in yourself, then any magic you're able to do isn't really your own. And I think, um, you know, and I have, the great luxury of having many witchy friends and we are all completely different. Yeah. So one of us, one of my friends is incredibly structured and I have others who are, um, they don't give a shit about like Sabbaths and the wheel of the year. There's no right or wrong way to do it. But I think if you don't appreciate and accept yourself and know that you are magic in physical form, then it's going to be hard to find your, your connection. That's so beautiful and everyone is different and that's what makes the craft like so incredible. We all have our own, we all have our own mag magic and that should be absolutely celebrated and not tried to be shoved into a uniform. It's such craft. an individual thing. And however, like you said, you have a coven. Now I don't, I, because I, I'm not, it's not a structure that works for me, but I imagine there are some, you know, guidelines and practices that are, because you're part of a group. But I just don't think that anybody is in a position to tell, like, anybody else, you're doing it wrong, or you're not a witch if, or you're not yeah. a witch unless. Like, Jesus, you guys. Like, we mostly, like, that's what organized religions do, and that's why so many people don't want to be a part of them, because you can't tell somebody how, how to be magic. You can't tell somebody how to connect to divinity. You have to figure that out on your own. Yeah. Like, um, my big thing is, um, well, my coven is extraordinarily eclectic and there is no high real hierarchy. I hold space and I moderate and I provide information. That's pretty much it. Like everyone is welcome to follow their own joy and their own. We work with lots of different gods and well, most goddesses mostly. But what I found is good about more traditional covens, which I have been a part of before, is the learning. It's if it's run by the and it's always if it's run by the right people. If it's run by the right people, it's a space where people have the support and the structure to get a good foundation so then yeah. they can later on find their own path. And that's where the strength comes from. If it's a policing thing, I absolutely agree with you. And that's why a lot of Alexandrian or Gardnerian or whatever would just like look at my practice and diss me too, because really, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm not in your box. Well, guess what? I don't want to be in your box anyway. <laughs> but like you enjoy your box. I'm fully like, if totally. that would feel right and authentic and true to you, run with it, do your thing. It's not for me. And like, so let's be okay with being different. Like, absolutely. Jeez. So my last question before we talk about um, how to find you and work with you is tell us a little bit about the affirmations that you're going to be sharing and offering up uh, to everyone and that you've developed. You don't have to run through them, but like how do you use affirmations in your, like, in your practice? Because they've been around for a hot while, you know, ever since like Louise Hay came out and was like, affirmations. <laughs> well, yeah. And I think, you know, affirmations have been around for ages. Yeah. It's just speaking your truth into existence, right? Like the manifestation is such a big hot word and has been for several years and affirmations are a key part of that. It's, um, it's speaking your truth into existence. And so like I write them monthly for the magazine that I write for, which has become like a really fun project to do. Um, I think the key for me, and maybe it's not for everybody else, is um, I, like, I like a mirror and I, I look myself in the eyes and like we, me and me have a moment. I'm like, okay, girl, let's do this. And you just have to speak it as though it already exists. And that, so you have to, it has to come from a place of belief. And um, that's the key. And it doesn't, it feels fucking ridiculous when you start doing it. That's one thing that I think people don't talk about a lot. It feels so stupid. But, um, you know, there's... I used to have a manager years ago and she would always say, what you think about, you bring about. 
and it's the truth. So when those negative thoughts start coursing through your mind, it's such a great tool to have like that, to be like, wait a second. Uh, and my affirmations tend to be very long and wordy because I am long and wordy, but to, to have that in your pocket as, um, you know, and as, as you were talking before about what do you do in these situations, that's a great opportunity to like maybe have something, have it written on your phone, make it your screensaver if that's what you need to do. I love that practice. And then just speak, speak your truth into existence. And it's amazing what you can accomplish. Yeah. It does, but it doesn't work like, it does work like magic. But in my experience, magic is, for me, magic has always been a slower thing. Like I, I don't find, oftentimes people are like, oh yeah, I wanted it and I got it. I'm like, well, that's cool for you. But for me, it's more like a set your mind on it take steps to get there and then ask for your help or your support or your inspiration. Like it's, it's a process. It's all a process to me. And that's exactly, yeah. With magic too, right. It's going to work differently for different people. And there's total instant magic practices. Like if you want a parking spot versus there's a different set of, of like steps. If you want a parking spot versus if you want to like unshed years or generations worth of shit, like that's a completely different set of magical rules. So, yeah, and that's important to 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 uh, to talk about. Like, it's, so thank you for bringing that up, because it's not like you can snap your finger and be like, "Well, there goes my generational, you know, pat- patterning." You know, like, like, uh, no, <laughs> that's no way. Time, honey. Super. Like, yeah. I, my favorite affirmation is long and wordy, but it's, um, "I am filled with a powerful natural magic from the tip of my toes to the crown of my head, and I have access to this magic at will." Love it. Lengthy and wordy, but uh, it is uh, for me. It's very effective. Mine back here is: uh, I have everything that I desire. My life overflows with abundance, and I'm open to, open to receiving the gifts of the universe now. And that's literally like just behind my computer. So you see it all the time, which all is time. another great. Yeah, write that shit on your mirrors. Make it like I said. Make it your screensaver. Like have it every time you see it. It's just burying itself deeper and deeper into your subconscious and helping you manifest what it is that you want. Totally. So how can we work with you? What are you doing right now? Um, and what is uh, your Patreon? Tell us a little bit about that. Actually, I canceled my Patreon. <laughs> the thing is, um, it was taking up so much of my time right. and um, it was not yielding me enough money to make it worth maintaining because there are so many other things I can be doing and reaching more people. So I don't have that anymore. But um, oh, there you go. that was an act of self-care right there, honey. It totally was. Yeah. Like I was killing myself to put, and I had like, I had seven Patreon supporters and they were so sweet, but I felt like I could serve a wider community by just getting rid of that. So, um, now I'm trying to, um, like, you know, there's a thing in this community in, in any kind of spiritual endeavor, I think when you try and monetize it and it becomes very problematic. And so I'm trying to figure out, honestly, the best way for me to do that. Um, so I have, I'm in the process of opening a, an online tea shop because um, I, I make, I'm an herbalist. And so I make very specific teas. They're not necessarily yummy all the time, but I make them for... If they're working, they sometimes really aren't. <laughs> oftentimes they are gross. Yeah. But uh, so that's something that I'm working on. And um, I on my Patreon, I had an option for people to do like video kind of like this discussions about um, herbal medicine, but that's not an option anymore. And I think I'm like looking at, I have this list of goals over here and I'm like, what's on there that I could share? Um, I'm working on, I don't know. I don't really have a lot going on right now. I think the best thing to do is if you have vibed with this amazing lady, like I have is go and follow all of her socials, which I will put in the description in the um, podcast for over at ethany.com and make sure you go to see uh, Instagram at glitter in the dirt, turn that's on the notifications and yeah, cause that's where I found you. That's no, okay. And, um, and then when you do get your offers up and running, um, we're already like, you're already connected. So that's ready to go. Ready to go. Ready to go. I know we could have talked about this topic all day. Um, I know we, that we, I feel a lot of times I like sitting here just nodding thank you so much for sharing everything that you have and being so authentic and so open about your journey. Um, representation matters. You know, we need to talk about mental health and self-care and body, body positivity 
even if it is problematic and, and shades of gray are all in there. So I super appreciate your time. I love what you're doing. Um, and I hope that lots of people come to find you and we can support you further on your journey. That would be cool. Thank you so much for having me. And I hope I didn't, I hope I made sense to everybody because I can I talk a lot. It was, it was beautiful. It was perfect. So thank you so much for everyone who has been listening and watching and we'll see you next time.